Hello YouTube, um, today we're going to go over multimeters. Um, we got two different kinds here. We got digital and we got an analog. Um, analog is basically a needle will move depending on what the voltage applied and digital um, a display will display a number depending on the voltage applied. Um, let's first take a look at the analog meter. All right, you see the scale up there. There's a whole bunch of different numbers. It looks really confusing and, you know, headache to even look at. But let's first look down here. Um, you get different ranges to select. All right, well, first let's turn our thing down here. This is DC volts, and we're at 15. So that's 15 DC volts. All right, now if we come back up to the scale, you'll see that there's, on the very bottom, there's zero through 15. That is your DC scale for 15 volts. Even though it says AC, 15 volts off to the side. And that's actually the scale to use to measure DC 15 volts. Okay. And then if you look down here at your bottom, you got a black and a red. Your black's your common, and your red's your positive. Um, you got a max amount of voltage you can carry through here. 500 volts max to ground and um, 1000 volts RMS max to your positive. Um, RMS, we'll go over that later. Um, that's not peak voltage, that's RMS again. Okay, so you got the scale that changes. Now as I change my multimeter from to 150, that bottom scale, then you add a zero to each number. So 5 would be 50, 10 would be 100, and 15 would be 150. Now, if we move on to 1,000, you'd see the, the scale right above that. You'd use that scale, which is 0 to 1,000 volts. I know a lot of you guys will not be playing with 1,000 volts DC, so you, you can ignore that for now. Um, if you move it up for ohms, the top scale on the top will read from right to left when my needles or when you take the probes and connect them to a um, resistor or a circuit with no power on it. You never measure ohms with power on um, and that's tops measured in thousands. So that first one on the right hand side is a thousand or one thousand ohms. The two is two thousand, three is three thousand, and so on. Um, use the little mirror there between the ohms reading and the thousand DC volts. That is so you can see where your needle is, and when you look at it, you try to line the the image reflecting of the needle up with the needle, so you can no longer see the needle reflecting. So the needle actually blocks its image, and that'll tell you you're on the right number. Because as you look from side to side, the needle may change positions, even in the camera. But that's because I'm actually moving it. But it, that's the way you read it. Um, and then if we go over here to 150 milliamps, we're then going to go back down to the bottom scale, 0 through 15 and that is going to be my milliamp scale and that will tell me how many milliamps I have um, now if we move over to 1000 volts AC we're going to use the same scale that we used for 1000 volts DC and then so on for 150 and 15 volts AC we're going to use the bottom scale that we used for DC okay now to just show you a simple test I'm going to connect my common to my common insert and my positive to my positive. I'm going to hook this up to my common on my power supply, common to common, positive to positive. I'm going to make sure my power supply is set to zero or one, which is what I, as low as I can go. I'm going to turn the power supply on and you're going to see the needle moved up. Now I'm set in the 15 volt range. So let's say I go up to 10 volts. Well, went a little too far. Right there, we're at 10 volts. My power supply is reading 10 volts. And my analog meter is reading 10 volts. Well, a little less than 10 volts now.
that's the better for that. Right there, it's at 10 volts. I'm going to move that down to 5 volts if I want. Move it down to 2.5 if I want. I'm going to move it down to 1.2 or 1. And I can see the changes. Now this meter will fluctuate by vibrating. You're not supposed to do this to the meter because you can damage them. Just to be really careful and cautious because unlike a digital, these meters are very sensitive. And any equipment you use for measuring or testing should be well taken care of. Um, turn my power supply off. Turn my meter. I'll disconnect my leads first because my ohms setting is in between my off. And if you run power through your ohm setting, you'll blow the fuse on your analog multimeter. Now I'm going to take my digital and hook up my leads and you notice a digital has three different leads. They're color coded so you, everything on the meter is set up in a color coded fashion. Um, it doesn't mean green goes with green up here because you know this is a battery and this is measured in um, DC not AC because batteries don't store in AC. Um, nor does the blue and blue go together. Um, this is your DC volt setting, but no, unlike the analog meter, you don't have to select between 15 to 1000 volts. You just select DC volts, and it's an auto ranging meter, so you don't have to worry about changing that. Um, you got your AC volts right underneath that. You got your ohm setting, your AC milliamps, your diode tester which will tell you the amount of voltage or millivolts that goes across the diode and then your continuity tester which is the beep down there and you can use that to measure circuits that are off and it'll beep and tell you that it'll flow through it'll also beep if you touch the leads together because obviously it's going to flow from one lead to the next um, you got your DC 10 amps down here which to measure DC and 10 amps you'd have to put your positive right here in the DC milliamp I mean amp uh, hole, this one um, to measure DC milliamps you don't have to actually change the the setup from measuring voltage or resistance or diodes or continuity or the battery or AC um, you can measure your battery and make sure that the load on the battery is good and that's 1.5 to not a 12 volt battery. You cannot use this for measuring car batteries, so do not try that. Um, even though it says 12 volts, don't you blow your meter up? Okay, let's do the same thing we did with our other meter and run through our DC volt settings. You see that it's reading zero volts. Power supply's off. Turn the power supply on, and we got it down to our lowest setting and we're going to adjust it up and up and up and no matter how high I go it'll measure unfortunately I only got a 16 volt power supply um, so that's as high as I can measure um, and it measures just like the analog but unlike the analog it requires no thinking and you can just go with what you see um, sometimes it'll read a number like 8.46 but it won't be volts it's determined up here by this little letter and that stands for 8.43 volts sometimes it'll have an M before the volts standing for millivolts and um, you need to pay attention to that um, and you notice that we're in DC right here if I were to switch to AC I would not get a reading and it says AC over there I'm getting a little bit of reading but you're not going to get the accurate reading it's not going to tear up the meter or anything to run it in DC and AC but you're not going to get a reading so that's not an accurate way to test um, then turn off the power supply again Just turn my meter off and I'm going to show you how to test for resistance in circuits alright I'm just going to draw a basic um, schematic here you got this, you got a resistor got another resistor and we got another resistor 
and we connect back to ground. And um, we're going to have a test point here, test point here, test point here, and a test point here. Now, to measure your resistance across the resistor in the series circuit, you would apply a test lead here and a test lead here. Anywhere in between the test point and there is fine. Um, what you're trying to do is it doesn't matter if you have positive over here or negative over here. Make sure there's no voltage in the circuit. And for that I should have just drawn an open switch. Um, Got an open switch so we can measure our voltage. Um, if you were to try to measure resistance from here to here with the open switch you would get zero or actually you would get infinite which means you wouldn't get a reading on a um, digital meter it'd be just like having your test leads and being on ohms um, so to put this to actual some practical use I'm gonna see if I got a circuit up here I can just simply pull from here we go okay now say I want to measure the resistance of one of these resistors that I'm curious to know about. Okay, well I'm going to set my meter to ohms and it's at infinite right now and I'm going to set, I'm going to touch my test lead to one side of the resistor. It's hard to do so I can show you. And then I'm going to stick my test lead to the other side of the resistor. And if you can see my meter down there this is a 2.3 ohm resistor. 2.2 to 2.3. Now if I go over here and I find another resistor, I'm just going to connect it to one side of the resistor and then on the other side you see that this is a... well one second... I'm not touching. There we go. This is a 300,000 ohm resistor, even though it says 0.3 mega ohm. And you can see that by the little M, the little M next to the ohm symbol. That means mega. Um, measure some other ones in here. Um, measure this one back here, just a curiosity. And then we'll trace it and figure out where it goes through at. And all right, there it is. And that one's reading at 21, 22 ohm resistor. So I know those, if that's what the values on the resistor say, I know that the resistor is within tolerance and I'm good to go. Um, that same principles here. I just measure between here and here. It doesn't matter which one I measure. I'm using that to that. It doesn't matter. And as long as I don't measure from here to here, I'd get zero. But if I measure from here to here, I'd get the resistance. And if I measure from here to here, I'd get the resistance of this resistor. Um, don't try to measure the resistance across the battery, of course.